Welcome to the InVision Tech Talks, a series of free webinars for different topics from machine vision, embedded vision, and 3D metrology organized by InVision Magazine. My name is Lukas Liebig. I am your host today, and I represent Peter Ebert, Chief Editor in Chief of the InVision. And I will start now my presentation. The, there you can see what today's topic. Uh, moment. So welcome to our today's topic, deep learning with presentations by volume graphics, vision and control and you resis. Then Mr. Jolet from Eurisis, you can yeah. turn on. Yes, perfect. And then let me share so, my screen. Yeah, I will check it. You should see it. Not yet, but it's yes, we can see it. Perfect. Okay, so thank you, Luca, uh, for this nice introduction. So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this uh, year is presentation about deep learning. Uh, deep learning is a trendy subject in computer vision. All, all major actors in this field are proposing deep learning-based solutions or components, um, simply because the, the deep learning approach opens up new opportunities in various domains where classical or conventional algorithms simply fail to provide stable and reliable solutions. Um, there are several kinds of deep learning tools available, and the goal of this presentation is to give you some hint on how to choose the most appropriate tool for your application. So uh, after a very short introduction about uh, the Eurysis company, I will make a comparison between the conventional rule-based algorithm method and the deep learning approach. Uh, we will then review tools such as classifiers, segmenters, and object detectors. Focusing mainly on the advantages and drawback, we will explain based on some application example, how these tools meet typical requirement of machine vision applications and how to choose between them. But let's start with the presentation about Eurysis. So uh, we are manufacturer of machine vision components. Uh, our headquarter is in Sarai, which is located in the Eastern part of Belgium. We have R&D teams in Belgium and in Germany. Eurysis also has sales and support offices in Europe, in USA, in uh, China, in Singapore, and in Japan. Um, currently, our staff counts uh, 85 uh, employees, and half of us are working in the R&D department. Eurysis also benefits from an extensive network of distributors, and we are renowned for providing high-quality products and premium support to OEM and system integrators. Um, so at Eurysis, we offer three types of, of products. Uh, we are, of course, very well known for our frame grabbers that have been used in the, in the vision industry for more than 30 years now. Uh, in addition to frame grabbers, we also develop and produce IP cores for various interface standard and imaging sensors. We also provide a complete range of machine vision software libraries known as Open Vision. And those libraries are dedicated to the development of 2D, 3D, and deep learning-based applications. So the deep learning term basically refers to artificial neural networks, and in particular, the artificial neural networks that are commonly used for image analysis are called convolutional neural networks. The deep learning approach offers several advantages. It reduces the integration cost by allowing easier and faster application development. Unlike rule-based algorithm where we must provide a detailed description of the object or the defect we are searching for, in case of deep learning, we just need to train the neural network with a data set of images featuring those objects or defects. In terms of programming, since we don't have to write code to describe in detail what is considered as a defect, the development of deep learning based application is easier and much faster. Um, another advantage concerns the maintenance and the evolution of such application. So if we consider an application which detects defective products and identify the type of defects, 
Uh, suppose we must upgrade this application to detect a new type of defect. Uh, in case of a deep learning based application, this evolution just requires adding images of this new defect in the data set, in the data set, then train the neural network with the updated data set. And there we go. Our application is now taking the new defect into account without the modification of a single line of code. And this is probably the most important things here without the modification of a single line of code. If we need to apply the same evolution to an application which is based on conventional algorithm, well, you have to be prepared to rewrite a significant part of your code, which is not the case for deep learning basic applications. There are basically three families of deep learning tools, classifiers, segmenters, and object detectors. And at Heuresis, all those tools are gathered in the deep learning bundle, which is part of the vision software package called Open Vision. So the first tool I want to talk about is the classifier. So as one can, can tell from its name, a classifier aims at classifying objects or defects. Classifiers are mainly used to sort a product in various classes or to, def to detect defective products. So to achieve this task, the classifier must be trained beforehand. The training is based on a set of labeled images, the so-called data set. The performance of the classification highly depends on how representative um, uh, a neural network uh, data set is. Nowadays, with modern convolutional neural network, as few as 100 images per class are sufficient to train a neural network for the classifier. So after the training process, the classifier is able to uh, qualify or yeah, classify images, which means that for any given image, it returns a list of probabilities showing the likelihood that the, this image belongs to uh, the class it has run. actually. So, in case of defect detection, a classifier is uh, able not only to detect defective products, but also to identify the type of defects. Um, however, uh, what a classifier cannot do is to very accurately locate the defect itself. This is the main limitation of classifiers. In OpenVision, the deep learning classification library is called Easy Classifier. Um, our next tool is the segmenter. So according to the operating modes, two flavors of segmenters are available. The first one is called unsupervised segmenter and it is used for defect segmentation. It works by learning a model of what a good product is, which means a product without any defect. So this is done by training the neural network with uh, images featuring good sample only. So after this training, even though the segmenter has never seen any image featuring defect, it is able to detect anomalies or any, any differences compared to the model it has learned. So the unsupervised segmenter can then be used to classify new images as good or defective. So in case of defective product, it also segments part of the image that differ from the learned pattern and therefore provide the exact position of the defect. Um, training the neural network with images of good sample only is a great advantage for application where defective samples are not readily available. An unsupervised segmenter is also the perfect tool when uh, defects are not predictable. For instance, in case of a new type of defect that might appear due to the aging of a machine. The drawback to train the neural network with good uh, sample only is that it cannot identify the type of defect. So the unsupervised segmenter might also not be, um, not be able to detect very small defects or defect that makes the object look smoother. The second type of segmenter is called supervised segmenter and it is used for semantic segmentation. So it works by learning a model of what a good product is and what a defect is. 
Um, so, so this is done by, by training the neural network with, uh, with images that are annotated with the expected segmentation. So after the training, the, the supervised segmenter can identify products that contain defects and precisely pinpoint where they are in the image. So the supervised mode achieves a better precision and can segment segments more complex defects than the unsupervised mode, thanks to the knowledge of the expected segmentation. So the main advantage of semantic segmentation is that it can basically segment anything. So as long as the neural network has been trained with correctly annotated images, a supervised segmenter can very accurately segment and differentiate between several classes of, uh, of object or defects. Of course, as always in computer vision, there, are, there is a trade-off between speed and robustness. Um, the semantic segmentation is more precise and more robust compared to the unsupervised segmentation, but it is slower. Typically, it's two times slower than the unsupervised segmentation for the same image resolution. Um, the preparation of the data sets before training also takes more time because each image must be annotated with the ground truth segmentation. Uh, and therefore, <coughs> at least 100 annotated images per class are required to try uh, to train the supervised segmenter. So in OpenVision, the deep learning segmentation library for both supervised and unsupervised mode is called easy segment. The last tool we, we will talk about in this presentation is the object detector. It is used to locate and identify objects, products, or defect, defects in images. So the neural network of an object detector must be trained with images where the objects uh, that must be found have been annotated with bounding boxes and the corresponding labels. As an alternative, if all objects feature the same size, uh, clicking the center of each object is sufficient to uh, annotate the corresponding image. This is what we call the interest point mode. So after the training, the object detector has the capability to detect or to, or to predict uh, the bounding box surrounding each object it has found in the image, and of course, associate a label to each uh, bounding box. The object detector is uh, able to distinguish overlapping objects, which, uh, which makes it uh, suitable for, uh, for counting them. Uh, compared to a supervised segmenter, the annotation of the, of the data set to train the neural network of an object detector, uh, it's much simpler, it's much easier. You just require placing a bounding box around the object to be learned or clicking the center of this object and then place or assign um, a label to it. <coughs> For, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm sorry. For reliable <clears throat> identification, at least 100 instances of each object uh, should be learned. <coughs> <coughs> An object detector is faster than the supervised segment, <laughs> typically two times faster. <coughs> However, <coughs> Compared to a classifier, an object detector is more or less uh, three times slower, and the localization of objects in bounding boxes is also um, is also slightly less accurate than the pixel segmentation of a supervised segment. <coughs> in OpenVision, the deep learning object localization and identification library is called EasyLocate. So in terms of speed, as already anticipated, uh, we can see from this, sorry, we can see from this chart, <coughs> I'm really sorry, that for the same image resolution, uh, the classifier is the fastest too, while the supervised segmenter is the slowest. To further increase the speed 
Iresis has recently introduced the concept of engines uh, that represent tools uh, to run the neural network. So for platforms that are based on Intel CPU or Intel GPU, we recommend to use the OpenVINO uh, engine, which is particularly interesting when the inference <coughs> is performed uh, by the CPU. And on the other end, if the platform is equipped with an NVIDIA GPU, we then recommend to use the Tensor RT engine. So now let's consider several uh, types of application. And for each of them, uh, we will determine the most appropriate deep learning tool to use. So uh, suppose we need to inspect small uh, stone tiles. <coughs> this application must separate good sample from bad ones. The position and the number of defects does not really matter, but it is mandatory to identify the type of defect. So to summarize those requirements, uh, first, we need to detect defective products. Uh, we need to identify the type of defect and we need, and the location of the defect does not really matter. So easy classify is therefore the, the perfect tool for this job. Another domain where the usage of deep learning is interesting is the food industry. Uh, for instance, before the packaging process of food or vegetables, the presence of foreign material must be detected. And for such application, an accurate localization of the foreign material is important because of course we need to remove it. Uh, but the identification of the foreign material is also, um, is also required because we need to understand at which stage of the process the foreign material has been introduced. Uh, so for all those reasons, um, uh, the, the easy segment supervised mode is the, the most adequate tool for, for this application. Now suppose that uh, we need to count objects that may overlap. Uh, those objects are placed in bulk. There are various types of, of, of objects so we need to identify them. <coughs> for this type of application, um, this is typically a job for easy to kit. Uh, the printing and the, uh, the textile industry also benefit from deep learning. So in this case, the application needs to uh, detect defective products and return the position and the size of each defect. So the identification of uh, defect is not relevant. Uh, for, for this industry, the, the, the defect that may appear due to the aging of the machine is usually not predictable. So for this, for this application, uh, it is, um, the following requirements are uh, very important. So retrieving the location of the defect is mandatory. Uh, the defects are not predictable and there is no need to identify them. So because of the ability of uh, to train the neural network with only good quality uh, samples, the unsupervised mode of easy segment is the most appropriate tool for, for such application. Uh, finally, the processing time is another aspect that should be considered. Uh, for, for time critical uh, application, the main concern is the speed. And in this case, when possible, easy classify should be the preferred solution. So as we have seen, there are some functionality overlapping between classifiers, segmenters, and object detectors. And choosing the deep learning tool that best fit your requirements, it's not, it's not always obvious. So in this presentation, we have provided some hints to select the most appropriate tool for your application. Um, for a free evaluation of all the URSS deep learning tools, we provide the deep learning studio application. So deep learning studio can be downloaded from the URSS website um, and its usage does not require any license. So deep learning studio can be used to create your own data set of annotated images. Uh, it also manages the data augmentation, which means that you can artificially introduce geometrical deformation of images in your data set or apply uh, color or luminosity variation, or even add different type of noises. So the goal of the data augmentation is to make the, the neural network more robust <clears throat> to, um, to variation or deformation that are not available or not sufficiently available in the data set. Of course, um, deep learning studio can be used to, uh, to train your, the neural network. 
After the training, the user can validate the robustness and of the results in the run network by means of some metrics. And of course, Deep Learning Studio can be used to, uh, for inference to evaluate the performance of our easy classify, easy segments, and easy locate libraries. So please don't hesitate to download Deep Learning Studio to evaluate, uh, to evaluate our deep learning tools. And if you need any assistance during your evaluation, please contact the URIS's technical support. And this concludes my presentation. So <laughs> thank you a lot for your presentation. Uh, I hope it's a bit better with your, your throat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I, I have a short question uh, if for me. I will answer it. It's uh, of the question if uh, this uh, presentation, this webinar will be recorded. Yes, and uh, you will receive a link uh, where you can view the recording. So, uh, for this, and now uh, here is uh, someone saying not a question, but a very nice and clear presentation about the basics by Eurisis. So, you. this uh, I'm glad to 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 say, to to read it. Um, yeah, um, maybe here I have a question for you. Do you provide tools to simplify the image annotation process? Uh, so yes, so the, the Deep Learning Studio application I have mentioned uh, allows you to annotate uh, very easily the, uh, your data set. So whether it is for just placing bounding boxes uh, around objects to, to be learned for easy locate or clicking the center of those objects, uh, we, we provide what is necessary to do that. Uh, for the more, let's say, complex annotation for uh, segmentation, for supervised segmentation, we also provide different tools to have or to, to put mask and to really provide uh, the, the segmentation for all those images. So yes, we do provide to do that. Right, thank you. Uh, another question, is it possible to run your deep learning tools on embedded platforms? Yeah, so all the open division uh, libraries uh, can run on embedded systems. So we do support the ARM platforms. Um, of course, if the, the embedded platform is also equipped with a, with a GPU, it will also help for the, uh, for, the, for the deep learning analysis. But yes, it's possible we have application running on embedded systems, even on smart cameras. Nice, uh, thank you. Um, third question, are there any sample data sets available to experience your deep learning tools? Uh, yeah, for, for all our um, deep learning based libraries, we provide uh, images. Actually, they are available from our website. If you go to the Open Vision download uh, area, you will find the additional resources uh, part of, the, of this download area. You will find um, different data sets for uh, easy classify, for easy uh, locate, and for easy segment both supervised and unsupervised mode. Actually, those, the, the package contain uh, the data set that, that are already annotated. It means that the neural network is already trained, so you can directly start with the inference. But if you want to start from scratch and just using those images to, uh, to learn your own, uh, to create maybe your own data, set, uh, data augmentation features, uh, to manage the data split, and uh, to, uh, to annotate the images by yourself, and then do the training, uh, it's possible to do it. So, yeah, we do provide uh, those resources. Uh, Mr. Julie, um, I have here a question, and it could be the last question, so um, last chance for the audience uh, to ask something else. Um, yeah, I will uh, read it. Um, what is the licensing, licensing model of your deep learning tools? So for the uh, the easy classify, easy segment, and uh, easy locate uh, library, we just have one license. It's called the uh, in the deep learning bundle. Um, the license can be activated uh, on a platform, meaning on a on a PC or on an embedded system. Uh, uh, we can also have uh, licenses activated on dongle, USB dongle that you just have to plug plug into a PC or again another embedded platform. Uh, so we have 
the, the goal is to have one license per platform. So even if you are running several applications on the same platform, on the same PC, uh, if those applications they are using Easy Classify, Easy Segment, or Easy Locate, you just need one license. So it's one license per PC. All right. 